The sunshine covers everything in light, and then we use its reflections to interpret the world around us. In almost the same way, some creatures use sound to create their image of the world. One of the most famous groups of creatures to echolocate are the whales or cetaceans, and they use a lot of incredibly complex specializations in order to achieve this feat. These have evolved over the past 30 to 35 million years, and these new features contributed to a turning point that made the toothed whales the largest and most successful oceanic predators living today. Unlike the vast majority of mammals, whales do not use their larynx or vocal folds or even use their mouths to make their sounds. They have specialized air sacs near their blowhole. They use these to push air through their nasal cavity into a uniquely evolved organ called a melon that is filled with a fatty substance and is used to focus the sound similar to an optical lens. The melon organ is the reason that toothed whales like belugas, dolphins, and killer whales have their characteristic giant forehead. After the sound has been modulated by the melon organ, it travels out through the head into the water. The whale then picks up the reflected sound through their lower jaw and ears. Their lower jaw is hollow and filled with fat that helps pick up the sound almost like an antenna. This is fairly different to bats, the other famous echolocators, that actually use their larynx to emit their noises, creating sound just like the vast majority of animals. The sounds they make have just been highly specialized to gain information from their echoes. Despite the differences in the way that bats and whales produce sounds, where they produce these sounds, and that while whales are the largest animals known to have existed, among the bats is the smallest species of mammal. There is actually still a degree of genetic similarity. Scientists analyzed the gene sequences in the genes involved with the motion of hair cells in the ears of bats, whales, and several other mammals as a control. Mammals use their ear hairs to differentiate different frequencies, so they are likely important for echolocation to work. Whales' closest living relatives are hoofed animals like pigs and cows, and yet they had very little in common in their ear genes. However, bats and whales are about as distantly related from one another as they can be while still being mammals. Yet, their ear genes cluster together remarkably well. Whales didn't have this complex system when they entered the oceans. Whales adapted to life in the sea around 50 to 40 million years ago, and the first whales were known as the Archaeoceti, or the old or ancient whales. The first fully aquatic Archaeoceti were known as the Basilosaurids, that were quite primitive, still having many features left over from their more recent terrestrial origins, like still having a neck and small hind limbs, and have no evidence of having any echolocating abilities. To learn more about early whale evolution, you can watch this video here. The Basilosaurids were the most dominant whale family for many millions of years, but around 35 million years ago, at the very end of a time known as the Eocene, whale evolution took a very different pathway. Whales split into two groups, the baleen whales, or the Mystoceti, and the toothed whales, or the Odontoceti, that would have been the ancestors of today's sperm whales and dolphins. These new whale specializations must have suited the changing environment better because after a while, these two groups became considerably more common, until today, where all whales are either baleen or toothed whales, the more ancient whales going extinct. At the end of the Eocene period, around 35 to 30 million years ago, the ocean started to cool down, thought to have been caused because Australia and Africa moved further north, creating better passage for the sea to flow around Antarctica, cooling down the ocean. More ancient whales like Basilosaurids were by and large warm water animals living near the equator. However, toothed whales and baleen whales possessed a considerably larger insulating fatty layer than the more ancient whales. This would have made them far more adaptable to the cooling ocean temperatures at this time. The last Basilosaurid whale known to have existed was called Cachenodon, that had fossils known from New Zealand dated to around 26 million years ago. The other big thing that differentiated the more ancient Archaeoceti whales like Basilosaurids from the toothed whales was echolocation. There is no evidence that any of the Basilosaurids were able to echolocate, but there is a lot of evidence that echolocation evolved very early in the evolution of toothed whales. The earliest toothed whale, or Odontoceti, known in the fossil record was called Cymocetus, that lived around 32 million years ago, and there is already evidence that these whales may have had some echolocating abilities. It was only known from a skull and a few vertebrae. Unlike the skulls of the older whales, like Basilosaurids, it had a slightly concave section in its skull similar to a dolphin, showing that it may have had a melon, only it would have been much smaller. 
Its lower mandible was also hollow, showing that it most likely had a similar jawbone. Although this can't be taken as conclusive evidence of echolocation, as this also helps whales hear underwater. The combination of Simocetes' snout, teeth, and jaws show that its diet would have been very different to modern dolphins. Simocetes' snout and jaws pointed downwards, which is more similar to the skull of a manatee or dugon. Manatees and dugons have a skull that points downwards because they mainly eat vegetation like seagrass. However, Simocetes' teeth were very sharp and carnivorous looking like modern toothed whales, meaning it is highly unlikely they were herbivorous. One theory is that they fed on animals close to the seabed, which could make sense as their sonar would have been helpful if they kicked up sand after sieving through the sediment. However, there are issues with this interpretation of how the animal lived. Their jaws were probably not strong enough to be routinely breaking into animals like clams, and there isn't any evidence of wear on their teeth made from the sand so there isn't an obvious answer to what their eating habits were like. However, not all toothed whales were like this. Another whale from around the same time, named Ankyla Rizza, was uncontroversially a fast-moving large predator. Ankyla Rizza was originally only known from a jawbone discovered in South Carolina. It was over a meter in length filled with sharp large teeth and had space to anchor powerful jaw muscles depicting a high bite force. Further material discovered from its skeleton shows that it may have been able to grow up to 5 meters long, which is around about the same size as a great white shark, and would make it the largest toothed whale of its day, probably filling a similar ecological role to an orca feeding on large prey. Ankyla Rizza has evidence that it echolocated, and there are many other examples of early toothed whales from the early Oligocene that have evidence in one way or another that they were most likely capable of echolocating to some degree however had different body shapes and sizes showing they were occupying different ecological niches not offering any clues into what the conditions were like for toothed whales to evolve echolocation. It's possible that echolocation may have been such a game changer for predatory whales at the time they were able to diversify and dominate in many different niches in a fairly short amount of time. However, there are some theories about what the earliest echolocating toothed whales may have been like. In the Miocene epoch around 20 million years ago, there was a new group of toothed whales known as the Squalodontids that became highly successful. And these whales have surviving relatives, the Ganges and Indus river dolphins. Both of these dolphins are now highly endangered, but their relatives used to be widespread and diverse, living in both marine and freshwater ecosystems, filling a similar niche to modern oceanic dolphins. And there were some members of the group that adapted to be almost as big as killer whales and these freshwater dolphins are actually the last remnants of this much bigger family. Despite their name, river dolphins are actually quite distantly related from oceanic dolphins, which are from a family called Delphinidae. DNA evidence shows that they diverged from the rest of the toothed whale group around 30 million years ago, making them some of the oldest toothed whales, which may offer clues about the early evolution of echolocation. Study of the Ganges River Dolphin has found they produce echolocation clicks at a very low frequency, which is highly unusual compared to all other study toothed whales that have a much higher click frequency. Having a lower frequency is better suited to seeking out prey at a shorter range, and it makes sense that these river dolphins would have evolved this way because river systems often have a more complex shape for the sound to travel around than ocean ecosystems, but more importantly, freshwater ecosystems are usually a lot murkier than oceanic ones, so visibility is a big issue and may have forced these whales to rely on their eyesight less while hunting. Since these river dolphins are survivors of an early branching in the toothed whale family tree, this could represent a more primitive version of whale echolocation that has survived this time so toothed whales may have originally evolved echolocation to access environments with poor visibility, like murky water, hunting at night, or deep sea ecosystems, and later adapted to be able to see prey from miles away. So the story of how toothed whales developed one of their most powerful tools is still shrouded in mystery, and more fossils will be needed to be discovered to know for sure. However, when it comes to whales, the difficulty in finding information about the very early evolution of their echolocation seems to be directly linked to how successful it made them. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes out to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.